to the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. In Genesis chapter 28, the Bible says that Jacob found a place in the night to sleep. And he did not understand the covenant that was around that place. The Bible says, whilst he slept, his eyes were opened and he saw angels ascending and descending. The Bible never said they were coming to him. They were coming to those who were making a demand on their ministry. They were passing him. He was seeing them, yet he was not impacted by their presence. When he got up, he said, the Lord was in this place. And I knew not. The next time he would have such an experience is in chapter 32 of Genesis. This time around he had gone through seasons of pain in the house of Laban. He had understood the value of God's presence. After he dismissed his wives, his cattle, the people said, a man came to him and he held him. He said, leave me for the day breaketh. He says, I will not let you go unless you bless me. And he says, what is your name? He says, Jacob. He said, thou shalt no longer be called Jacob. For as a prince, you have had power with God and have prevailed. He touched the hollow of his thigh and blessed him. And the Bible says, the sun arose and he called the place Peniel. I have seen God face to face and my life is preserved. Father, give me an encounter in this conference. Lift your voice and pray an encounter that will shift my life my ministry please pray let it be from the depth of your heart for everyone that asketh receiveth everyone that asketh receiveth ye have not because ye ask not Give me an encounter, O oh God, that will prepare me to be a mighty battle axe. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Again, it truly is my joy to be here. We have a lot to do. I'd like you to be very sensitive. Um, this is a very major part of the conference now many things will be happening we'll have some time to teach and then we'll wrap up tonight with an impartation just be patient and let your heart be open the bible says while peter yet speak these things the holy ghost fell not on them that were around on them that had him it didn't fall on those who were around the vicinity it fell on those who had him praise the name of the lord it is always the hearing of faith and the walking of miracles. So I'd like for us to be opened and let's trust the Lord to help us in Jesus' name. Please be seated if you can. We began to discuss in the morning on fundamentals of effective ministry. Just a quick recap for those who were not here in the morning. The goal was to examine basically the idea of ministry from the standpoint of the kingdom we observe that um, the body of christ has been plagued with all kinds of wrong ideas of ministry ranging from standing behind the pulpit holding a mic leading a christian organization organizing programs that none of these things in themselves is ministry an activity can only be called ministry if and when the motivation behind it is to reveal Jesus and to glorify him. Are we together? 
that ministry basically refers to kingdom service and it is not limited to spiritual activities around a pulpit or around a church any contribution any participation any activity any effort that is channeled towards the revelation of the christ and the glorification of the same is called ministry your marriage can become ministry if kingdom come is represented in that union raising of your children is called ministry if you raise them to the end that christ be revealed in and through them your money can become ministry your giving the difference between a donation and ministering with your finances is the motivation so the lord cultured our hearts back to an understanding that it is not the activities that make ministry you can be involved with activities but not be in ministry we observed how that the prophet isaiah began to prophesy right from chapter one and for the first five chapters there's no record and mention of him being fake and yet in heaven there was still a call who shall go for us and who shall we send when isaiah saw the lord he saw the level of of insufficiency and that coal was used to touch his lips and he says now your iniquity is taken from you then who shall we send he said here am i send me and god didn't say you are already sent that means while he was doing a lot of things that we call ministry heaven was still calling who shall go for us praise the name of the lord and that ministry is not limited to the fivefold i know that this is a pastors and leaders conference but the core idea of ministry has to do with representing the interest the agenda of god in whatever capacity the unique expression of the fivefold is because they are the ones mandated as the gifts that build the ministers ephesians chapter 4 paul was mentoring the church in ephesus and he began a discourse that led to what we now call the five or fourfold ministry whichever perspective you want to look at it from let's turn there to start for tonight ephesians chapter 4 from verse 10 the bible says he that descended is the same also that ascended far above all heavens that he might feel all things and then the bible says next verse he gave some apostles some prophets some evangelists and some pastors and teachers these men are not the ministers these are the gifts he gave to men the bible says he gave gifts to men the gifts are not talents the gifts are men he gave men to men and then he says next verse 12 for the maturing the word perfecting there means the building up to maturity the maturing of the saints that the saints now matured will do the work of the ministry for the edifying of the body of christ 13 says till we all come into a mystery in the spirit called the unity of faith and of the knowledge of the son of god unto a perfect man unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of christ the result the bible says that we henceforth be no children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine and the slight of men and cunning craftiness wherein they lie in wait to deceive so the fivefold ministry was uniquely called and gifted to the body to help in that process of maturity it's important that we understand that if you find yourself in the fivefold ministry yes you are also in ministry technically but in reality you are the gift that prepares men to represent the purposes of god effectively and that your assignment does not stop until we come into a point called the unity of faith are you seeing that many times we rest when we have crowds god gave us the condition that must be met for us to know that we have done well it is not when you have hundred branches it is not when you have your name is all over the town you're doing well based on human parameters the bible says you should never relent until you find out that the body of christ attains this state called the unity of faith 
that maturity and i can tell you the body of christ has done well but we are far from that state that means every one of us regardless of our achievements organically speaking we must be up and doing to contribute to this reality is a burden in the heart of the father that the body of christ believers be matured are we together so i want to start this afternoon by discussing doctrine we said we're going to discuss doctrine and discipleship doctrine and discipleship doctrine is the mystery behind stature and maturity please look up the bible tells us that god's goal for his body for believers is that they not only become effective members of a denomination they not only become loyal followers of spiritual leaders that god's goal is that through the ministry of these gifts the body of christ will come into a state of maturity so the assignment of the man of god the assignment of a minister of the gospel primarily is to use the tool that the bible calls doctrine doctrine is the name given to the course curriculum that makes believers matured you have to understand this there is a definite course curriculum given to believers by which we attain maturity we are not left to our opinions in building believers in secular education we do not call people doctors engineers just by freelancing opinions there is an exact body of knowledge they submit to are we together yes we are diagnosing the problem with the body of christ now that the reason why there is a difference in spiritual understanding you meet two believers at random and ask them to engage in a conversation they most likely will end up fighting because of the extent of divide they will agree that we serve one god they will agree that jesus christ is lord of all but now begin to allow them to communicate and in five minutes they are irritating one another their terminologies what they believe what they do not believe that state was produced by an incorrect mentorship from leaders if you call a medical doctor from portacot here you bring another medical doctor from india you bring another medical doctor from china you bring another medical doctor from maiduguri if you put them together have never met themselves leave them in a conversation the margin of error will be very small because it was the same curriculum that was used to build them if we are having several believers with different opinions the problem is not the members we need to go back to examine what script we are using for the mentorship of those believers are we still together what we do in the body of christ is largely opinions and personalized dealings let me tell you how error comes to the body error comes to the body because of the way god treats men you see if god is calling me into an apostolic ministry or a prophetic ministry the character of his training will be such that number one there are other aspects that i need in my life that will not be captured in that training god will focus on the core areas that become the pillars of my ministry i give you an instance if god is raising me to be a prophet chances are that he will not teach me anything on administration and excellence and leadership my training will revolve around visions the gift of the spirit the ministry of prayer are we together now and because my dealing is so with god i will assume that is all i need two mistakes will come from that dealing if i do not leverage on the other supplies in the body of christ number one is that all the people i will mentor i will mentor them to respect only the dimension that was priority as far as my training is concerned any other dimension that comes i will teach them subliminally or directly to reject it because it was not captured in my training just because it was not captured in your training does not mean you will not need it god allowed that limitation intentionally to force you to depend on the body are we together now please follow very carefully
there is a danger still extending on my point with personalized dealings personalized dealings have to do with your personal work with god there is a way god trains me as a person that may not be applicable to any other person it's a product of my level of yieldedness it's a product of a backlog of my experiences my level of transformation or otherwise my personality those are factors that define how god trains me personalized dealings are good for your personal growth but they are not sufficient for you to ship them to become doctrines there is a condition for a truth according to scripture to be called a doctrine number one it must be represented in the character of the old testament number two it must be captured in the earthly ministry of jesus that body of knowledge must be represented in his teaching or in his work number three we must see that body of truth represented in the life and the teachings of the apostles any truth that does not pass this litmus test cannot be called a doctrine so if because god has vetted my heart and has found that having five cars may derail me he can give me a unique instruction and say in your whole lifetime do not have more than three cars it is not a doctrine it is his it is his gauge to help me to be efficient based on the vulnerabilities he knows now because i obey him i will excel based on that obedience so when i am mentoring people and they ask me the secret of my success i will tell them i have only three cars whereas there is a kingdom financier who needs 12 for the sake of the gospel i will make him feel guilty for being obedient to his call because he has to subscribe to my template to be called successful are we following yeah so this i'm showing you the evolution of error and imbalance in the body it didn't come because the ministers are wrong it came because we did not prioritize doctrine above experiences so largely what is communicated is our personalized dealings and because there are results to show it's difficult to say you are wrong are we together so from my three cast example find out that i'm efficient disciplined based on that now someone who i'm mentoring wanting to be like me regardless the scope of his assignment will reject anything if he hears anybody saying wow i have 10 cars and five of it is given to missionaries he will most likely fight that person because his men his mentor's template did not allow for that possibility if god has called me to be a prophet for instance and then i do not leverage on the supplies of the accurate teaching ministry to build someone can come and then i want to preach and i say look i don't have time for that there's time to prophesy and i begin to prophesy and people are receiving miracles you see that now because of the excellency of the results and the charismatism around the gift i will neglect the teaching ministry so all the people i raise will not place value on the teaching ministry the day they go somewhere and there's two hours of sound teaching they will call it nonsense they will say this is a dry powerless service because the templates that was given to them did not place priority on teaching Are we together if i'm an arrogant man of god who has no respect for other gifts in the body of christ subliminally all the people that that are under my tutelage and mentorship as i insult other men of god to their hearing as i tear down people to their hearing they begin to learn these things and in loyalty to me they will follow that same pattern you see that now so you have a, a generation of people having the ripple effect of the error of mentors we carry our personalities and we blame the holy spirit for it otherwise we would have been unashamed enough to say look this one is not the holy spirit it's a weakness in my personality i can work on it our ego may not allow us to admit so we call everything that happens around our lives we credit it to the holy spirit
when it is clear that he does not have a hand in many of them if i have anger problems it has nothing to do with the holy ghost it's just a level of unrenewedness in my heart i must be unashamed enough to admit that even though he's using me he's not endorsing that weakness hmm. are we together so we have different versions of these limitations scattered across the body of Christ from pride to lack of seriousness with the word to accuracy in the word with no grace for performance to exaggerations of truth to bitterness the scattered across regions the major problem is not the devil the major problem is the absence of doctrinal content in our teachings is largely an exegesis of opinions but believers were never never supposed to be raised by opinions doctrines must be exalted you are not a disciple and you are not doing discipleship if what you are teaching is not doctrine please write this down are we still together the word doctrine comes from the Latin word doctrina. The word doctrine comes from the Latin word doctrina. It means teaching. It means instruction. Comes from the Latin word doctrina. It means teaching. It means instruction. What is doctrine? Generally speaking, doctrine refers to a set of beliefs that are accepted and taught. A set of beliefs accepted and taught it also refers to a body of teachings or instructions a body of teachings or instructions a body of teachings or instructions deuteronomy chapter 32 and verse 2 please let's look at a few scriptures that show the power and the excellency of doctrine the course content it says my doctrine shall drop as the rain my speech shall distill as the dew as the small rain upon a tender herb and as the showers upon the grass so the doctrine is like rain that comes upon a little plant and causes it to grow doctrine the rain that comes upon a young believer and helps the believer to grow to stature and maturity if you're with me please say amen very very important isaiah 29 and verse 24 let's just look at three scriptures for time's sake it says they also that erred in spirit shall come to understand and they that murmured shall learn doctrine those who have erred in spirit will come to a point of understanding when they learn doctrine jeremiah 10 and verse 8 jeremiah chapter 10 and verse 8 but they are altogether brutish and foolish the stock is a doctrine of vanities there is such a doctrine called a doctrine of vanities a doctrine of vanities it means that when you sit under the mentorship of that body of information it will lead you to a mundane life that has no profit as far as god's standpoint is concerned a doctrine of vanities let's look at doctrine in the ministry of jesus because jesus is our pattern man the bible says to look on to jesus every time the bible says look on it means observe to learn it doesn't just mean look with your optical eyes let me show you what it means to look it means to look intently to observe ready to receive ready to learn acts chapter acts chapter 4 Acts chapter 4 please I need to explain to us very quickly what it means to look blessed be the name of the Lord Acts chapter 3 I meant to say Acts chapter 3 please let's start from verse 1 please pay attention the key verse is verse 5 but let's run through the first five verses now Peter and John went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer the Bible says being the ninth hour verse 2 it says and a certain man 
pay attention please lame from his mother's womb was carried whom they laid at the gate of the temple which is called beautiful to ask alms and of them that entered into the temple verse 3 who seeing peter so he was already seeing peter who seeing peter and john about to go into the temple asked for arms for and peter fastening his eyes upon him with john said look on us what does that mean the meaning of that statement look on us is found in verse 5 every time you say look on us in scripture this is what it means and he gave heed to them expecting to receive that's what it means to look every time it says look on us give heed expecting to receive are we together looking on to jesus giving heed to him expecting to receive matthew chapter 7 please let's run through a few scriptures please be patient matthew chapter 7 and verse 28 matthew 7 and verse 28 and it came to pass the bible says when jesus had ended these sayings the people were astonished at his doctrine jesus communicated doctrine an exact body of truth that was supposed to mentor these young disciples who would later become the apostles of the lamb matthew chapter 22 and verse 3 let's see how many we can touch very briefly just to establish the fact that jesus was not um matthew chapter 22 and verse 33 33 matthew 22 33 the bible says when the multitude heard this they were astonished at his so what did he teach them doctrine doctrine an exact authorized prescribed body of spiritual knowledge not opinions jesus taught doctrines mark chapter 1 and verse 22 mark 1 22 let's see if we can touch on two or three more scriptures the bible says whilst he taught they were astonished at his doctrine for he taught them as one that had authority and not as the scribes in the temple he taught doctrine you see the reason why the products that came from jesus were matured and powerful because even though he was the son of god he taught doctrine luke chapter 4 and verse 32 luke chapter 4 and verse 32 luke chapter 4 and verse 32 the bible says they were astonished at his doctrine aha uh -huh. for his word was with power that means if you teach and what you teach ends up just as a lecture something is wrong with it because if it's his doctrine there is also in it a power dimension are we together just because it is a teaching ministry does not mean it should not come with power the bible says they were astonished at his doctrine why because that word in the doctrine was with power power to change power to lift power to transform power to heal power to deliver last scripture john 18 19 john 18 19 we're examining the ministry of jesus the high priest then asked jesus of his disciples and of his doctrine look at this when they wanted to fight jesus their attention was on two things number one his followers number two his message this was what threatened the entire sanhedrin council they were not afraid of jesus as a person something about the quality of his teaching was tearing a revolution what is this man teaching it was affecting the minds of the people and so they wanted to know number one what are you teaching number two who is hearing you this is a strategy the devil will come after you in ministry when he comes he wants to know two things number one what is the content because he knows that words make he knows that truths ideas transform so before i attack that church let me know if it's worth my attack what are you teaching 
if you're teaching opinions he said you're already defeated you just continue i will leave you to think you are making progress there are many people who don't have attacks in their lives it does not mean they are doing well it's a sign that there's no point attacking them the error in doctrine has already made you defeated he asks jesus of his disciples and he acts of his doctrine two things that will scare the devil over any church what are you teaching what is the content of the truths you are using to build believers you see that because the information that you bring will shape their understanding and eventually begin to influence the systems jesus never sat in a house of parliament yet he was almost these guys were afraid they said there is something about this man the content of his information let's look at doctrine in the ministry of the apostles are we still here acts chapter 2 and verse 42 Acts 2.42 And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine. The Bible says, this is the early church. They continued in the apostles' doctrine and in fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayers. This is what made them mighty. This was the scope of their spiritual activity every time they gathered. They listened to a thorough exegesis of doctrine, fellowship, breaking of bread prayers acts chapter 5 and verse 28 acts chapter 5 and verse 28 now watch this when they caught the apostles their concern was not just the people the human bodies the threat to the government of the day was the doctrine this was what the devil did not want saying did we not strictly command you that you should not teach in this name and behold ye have filled jerusalem with your doctrine more than branches more than programs what was influencing the territory was doctrine there is something you are teaching that is making Ambroba stop stealing. There is something you are teaching that is transforming society. How come the men in a territory are suddenly becoming responsible? Corporately, there is something. You can trace the growth of society to the doctrine that fills that place. You can trace the deprivation and the retrogression in society also. It's an uncomfortable truth, but it's true. The quality of the life of people within a territory, among other factors, is a reflection of the quality of the truths that the spiritual leaders within that territory communicate. You see, Africa is a very spiritual continent. On average, every week, the average believer, including an unserious believer, submerges himself in some sort of spiritual training. Either a Sunday service, Please don't feel I'm not, you remember that this is what we're talking as men of God. Is that true? We're examining a few things. So this is not, this is not a call to sarcasm whatsoever. We're just challenging ourselves to rise to higher dimensions. There is a Sunday service, maybe a Tuesday service, a Wednesday service, most likely a night vigil, some kind of spiritual activity happening all week. That means if I handpick a believer who has been within a Christian circle for two, three, four years, and I ask him basic questions about the Christian faith, he should be able to rise in defense of that truth. Otherwise, we must hold the pastor accountable. What is the content of your teaching? Not necessarily the insincerity in character. Maybe a sincere person. They have filled Port Harcourt with your doctrine and intend to bring this man's blood upon her head. Can you imagine that? Romans chapter 16 and verse 17. I want you to see why the apostles were effective. The Holy Spirit we have today is the same Holy Spirit they had. The God they pray to is the same God we pray to. 
but we are not seeing their results because there is a missing link the doctrine they communicated is largely not the doctrine that we're communicating and the emphasis that they placed on doctrine we might not be pressing that far now i beseech you brethren paul is speaking mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine i like paul he's not mentoring based on opinions he's saying listen listen everything you do should be referenced to this doctrine there are people who cause offenses and division how do we know that what they are saying is divisive with respect to the doctrine that is being taught it is based on doctrine we can have the audacity to tell someone you are right you are wrong it is based on doctrine we can judge prophecy and say it is true you came back from heaven but something is questionable about this encounter you cannot just say i don't like what you are saying there has to be a reference to your defense the reference is doctrine the average believer is confused and cannot tell whether a thing is right or wrong you see that because that doctrinal reference is not there let's look at two more scriptures first timothy chapter 4 and verse 1 in fact i think paul's 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 epistle to timothy has about the largest in the new testament now about the largest compendium of this word doctrine 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 because he was mentoring his son in the gospel here's what four verse one says now the spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith the bible says and give heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of demons so the devil too has his mentorship system he can make you become something exact there is a body of truth whether you choose to serve god or satan is the same way you will grow doctrine there is something called the doctrine of devils a good person can teach the doctrine of devils you don't have to be bad or fake you just have to be ignorant and there are many many sincere doctrines in the body of christ that need to be edited from the light of scripture you see there are four principal ways i wish we had time there are four principal ways the bible recommends that we know god knowing god is not a mystery there are four biblical channels only four channels if you ever want to know the god of the bible there are only four channels the bible recommends number one is scripture the first authorized channel that can help anyone know god is scripture are we together scripture reveals the character of god scripture reveals his modus operandi so you know god when you study scripture you can meet a believer who did not know anything about the christian faith and get that person saved and hand over scripture and teach that person scripture and he can grow in the knowledge of god scripture number one number two the names of god we know god by exploring the dimensions of him captured in his name you would wonder why he's called the god of abraham isaac jacob rafa sikenu all of these names were dimensions of him the moment the nation of israel saw that dimension revealed they preserved it in a name so that every time their children wanted to learn that dimension they would draw that name from the archive of their experience and say look we never knew that god could move like this but when we saw it we said we'll not waste this experience we have to archive it for our children so they saved it you can use the names of god to learn him number three the third way that we know god is through the person jesus the christ the bible calls him the image of the invisible god calls him the word the logos of god that has been made flesh so i can know god when i study jesus i hope you know theologically speaking we're ministers of the gospel until jesus came 
nobody could accurately say they knew God there was a lot of haziness and confusion about God even among the prophets they credited both good and bad to God there was no standard no reference so one of the assignments of Jesus was not just to come and die he came as a manuscript and a marking script he came so that we will use him to start editing our ideas about God everything God said Jesus manifested whatever you said God said that Jesus did not do you are in error so your assignment is to look unto him and begin to edit what the prophets and the law and every other person said about God the things that superstition said about God we compare it Jesus came as a revelation of the father so I can look at Jesus are you seeing why the Bible was so detailed about his earth work because it does not want you to miss any information everything about his earth work it was more than a story it was God in action so he's saying study study how he treated children study what he did on crusade grounds what did he do when he saw the sick if it's true that God said I have loved you with an everlasting love I have drawn you with my loving kindness we can only verify if he's lying or not by looking at Jesus how far did Jesus go to prove the love of the father he died greater love had no man than this than a man laid down his life so we know God did not lie because Jesus proved he was true all authority in heaven and on earth has been given unto me how do we know God is not lying by looking at Jesus the last enemy that can be destroyed in this earth realm is death whoever destroys death by leaving this earth and coming back into it at will you see there is a law nobody dies and comes back by himself it has to take someone in the earth to call you in but Jesus showed that God was all powerful indeed by dying and calling himself back it was his entry back into the earth that led to Psalm 24 lift up your heads O ye gates the gates were surprised why are you saying we should open nobody on earth is calling you when you were coming from heaven a prophet has called you but now you are out of the earth and we are not hearing anyone call you and he says don't mistaken just because a baby was called this man who is coming now is the king of glory the lord strong and mighty the lord mighty in battle are we together so you know God by looking unto Jesus. If all you know about Jesus is that he just came and died for sinners, you've missed a major part of why he was here. His first assignment was to correct our aberrated view about the Father. How many of you have heard stories about people and you had all kinds of ideas until you met them? or you met those who were very close to them and you felt so disappointed so broken and you said i'm sorry god forgive me i was told this ceo is not a good man now look at this five of my children now have jobs because of him and you go back and you keep repenting and say god forgive me that's what jesus came to do if you study jesus you know you are knowing god when there is a lot of repentance in your life because you should find a lot of gaps in the things you have blamed God about. Jesus. When it was time to feed 5,000 with two loaf, five loaf and two fish, he didn't say those who understood or heard me move one side. He fed everyone. So when the Bible says the increase of the earth is for all, that even the king is fed by the increase in the field, it is true. Jesus came as the logos of God. The word made flesh, the logos. The, the, the word logos is the Greek word thoughts. The intent of a man that desires to find expression. Everything God was thinking, Jesus was living. Next time somebody says, I want to know you God. There's no mystery about it. What many people mean is I want to be caught up in the realm of the spirit. You will most likely meet familiar spirits. God's authorized channel is scripture if you cannot respect scripture that you can see it's not an angel that is invisible that you that's the law remember and then the last way we know god 
is through your experience in that order it is important but only the fourth your experience job said i have heard of you with the hearing of the ears now my eyes have seen you experience you can build a track record about god by yourself oh talk to our mothers and they will tell you there is something about god they knew not by preaching when the woman was about to die because of her pregnancy she called upon the name of the lord and rolled on the ground and that baby lived so every time she sees another woman who says look i'm about dying she says sit down let me tell you something about god i didn't go to school oh but there is a song i raised in 1975 every time i am in trouble when i raise this song the nation of israel had songs that were like codes when it was clear that defeat was imminent they didn't just sing praise and worship you are good and your mercy if they started singing that song against you no matter how you were winning it was a code for victory dearly beloved i hope you were blessed by this message do not keep the video to yourself share to as many as you can to help them bless check our home page for more of our messages subscribe to the channel comment on it like it See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. Salaskate bashkana kata branda kate kato. Kate branda kata bako tosko to break kate kate kata. The face of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.